different. You know, Ariel was different. When I met the guy, very humble, very hungry, you know, and, and, and I knew that he was going to succeed. I mean, have you guys seen that I signed any, anybody in the past three years? I mean, I'll show you text messages from Peso Pluma. My dream is to be with Dell Records. Echame la mano, viejo. Gavito reached out. Ivan Cornejo reached out. I didn't want to sign nobody, you know. I I was going through a, 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 a health issue. I think 2024 is going to be a, a big comeback for, for, for Dell. One in particular, Gerardo, I mean, the guy was a monster. I don't see him anywhere. He's not selling our shows. I mean, God bless him, you know. We used to pack arenas. What they're doing now, we did that almost nine years ago. I kind of saw the way they did business, and I didn't want to do that. I, I did it my way, based on my knowledge. My experience in business, my experience in the streets. So Tercel Mento, he's a pioneer of, of today's movement. We have the biggest song in the systems of, of um, the platforms, you know? Oh, that was done, you know, fucking, bro, there it is. You know, a little slap in the face. Gerardo would have never signed Adele like, because he was already in the talks with another label, right? What would have happened? What would have happened if this other artist would have never come? What's up, guys? Welcome back to another Agusto Papa podcast. If you guys are new to this channel, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Today, we are in the offices of Dell Records with a very special guest, a very hey, important guest. Mary. Today, we present the CEO of Dell Records, Angel Del Villar. Thank you. Thank you for the invite. Welcome to your house. No, thank you for the space. You. you know, every yeah. time we come, um, you know, you guys treat us good when there's yeah. parties or whatever with the merch. Like, we really appreciate yeah. it. And yeah, also, we really appreciate that... You haven't done an interview in such a long time. I think it's been like, what, like seven years? Um, I think the know? last interview that I did was, I think five. The one that I found was like, I think Margarito, right? Oh yeah, that was recently. That was, yeah, that was recently. Prior to that, like maybe five, six years. Yeah. Thank yeah. Well, yeah, we really appreciate you giving us the time. I know that you said uh, we don't really do these type of things. No. Uh, so we don't, we definitely don't take it for granted. Uh, we thank you and and uh, hopefully we get to talk about a lot of things. I know you probably want to say a lot of, a few things <laughs> as well. <laughs> I, I'm, hey, you know what? I'm ready. I'm an open book. You know, one thing I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be quite honest. You know, I don't, I don't fake the funk. You know, I tell like it is. And, you know, this is, this is the story behind the story. You know, oh, that's, that's awesome. But I mean, yeah. we want to go kind of like in a little timeline. Uh, we want to take it from, like from the start, you know, where are you from? Where are your roots? So I was born in Mexico. Um, I was born in Zacatecas, Mexico. Um, I came here when I was nine, you know, I've, um, you know, like any other immigrant, you know, with a dream, I guess, you know, and, you know, um, you know, living in LA, it wasn't, it wasn't easy, right? So, you know, this whole journey with the record label started, you know, a little more, more in the, in the future of, of my journey, you know, when I was, uh, 17, I already had a kid when I was 19, I had two kids been independent working for myself since i was 19 years old so it just it's just that you know it's been a beautiful journey how was the life growing up um, um in la it was it was tough in the 90s man a lot of people that are gonna see this podcast uh they're gonna you know growing up in la in the 90s you know the whole parral the cruising uh farayon like all that stuff it was it was it was very tense you know oh, awesome. nothing compared to right now <laughs> <laughs> so much different yeah of yeah. course of was course. there like any struggles that you faced that you remember when you were uh, I think yeah there's there's a there's a lot of struggles I think you know it's part of being successful you know it's part of a, a business you know I, I believe that that's what really makes you you know when you fail you know it kind of shows you and makes you a, a stronger wiser person you know so there's been uh, you know a couple of um, uh, things between uh, failure and success you know it's part of the journey that's yeah and a, a major question that i have right is how do you get into the music business how do you start your record label which or, is or for the love of music or for the love of music did you want to become an artist first how did that go right so it's it's a trip of how the universe works you know before i you know we we i came and sat down here with you guys i had a meeting with the guy his name is uva from grupo escolta right mm -hmm. uh he was the first artist that i signed on the label um it was just a vision that i had you know i i i used to see i used to um see how much it would cost to produce an album back in the days and it was 55 cents so i used to see all these artists selling a million albums two million albums and you know i'm a number guy i saw the difference between okay well they're selling them for for 11 dollars at the swam meets and it costs you 55 cents so that kind of it, it caught my attention you know but i started with uh, uva grupo escolta Banda and then 
it just took off right after that. And uh, what made you want to like start the record label? Was it your idea? Or uh, it, it was one hundred percent my idea. You know, and, and my um, I'm a I'm a very you know at the time I used to party a lot, so I used to hire like all these groups. And one time, this this guy from Banda Angeles Angeles Inaluenses told me to um, uh, help him produce an album. You know, so that kind of caught my attention. I says, mm-hmm. "Fuck, I'm paying you." At the time, it was like eight hundred dollars an hour. You know, so many hours. And it only cost uh, four thousand dollars to produce an album. And once again, I'm a numbers guy, so I said, "Man, this is there's some, there's something behind this whole uh, business venture, you know." So. And when you first started signing groups, was it already like digital or? Oh, no, 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 not no. yet. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna make this very clear. Um, I don't I don't feel like we started a um, a label. We started a movement. You know, I came in when you know physical CDs were like literally almost at their like. At, at the, last yeah, hundred percent, right? So, um, it's a beautiful story, you know. Wait for the book, you know. Wait for the book. There's, there's a lot to tell behind how the company started, but I'll, I'll you know, I'll give you guys a little bit of the taste. But it, it was just having a vision, you know, having a vision, having kids. Uh, I come from construction, you know. I still own a, a pretty big construction company, and it's just that, you know, it's part of the culture at the end of the day. Yeah. And starting your record label, where what were one some of the struggles that you faced because i mean i think starting from a business and building it up is probably like the hardest thing you know funding it you know keeping it flowing right i think honestly um it was just fun literally i never saw the whole uh investment behind it to me it's like i'm getting paid to have fun till today you know i get paid to have fun if i go to a venue if i have an an event i come in through the back uh, you know there's alcohol you know there's always women you know the women want to be with with the guy with the singer or whatever con, con el bueno, como digo yo, right? so to me it's more like uh it's a hobby that became a, a very successful story yeah i mean that's pretty amazing that you were yeah. able to turn your hobby into like what is uh-huh. your lifestyle now and yeah, like yeah. you were saying you didn't start uh, a movement you you're making a legacy as you go yeah 100 percent. you know to me i always tell this and, and and i'm gonna tell you right now a lot of people think that the artists are bigger than the label and i'm gonna correct people I believe that the label is bigger than the artist with all the respect. You know, I, I've seen a lot of talent that was here at Dell and uh, they were like, no, well, ya valió verga label because such artists left. I think we're stronger than ever today. This yeah. is the biggest year of uh, of the company in the past almost 16 years. Wow. You know, so wow. it's just, you gotta believe in yourself. You gotta believe in your team. We have an amazing infrastructure. We have a solid foundation. Um, and believe me, we're hungry, you know? Yeah. We're still hungry. We haven't we haven't lost yeah. it. You know? I'm talking about like so much that Dell has accomplished. Um, what were your goals or what was your vision? Because you know, like you're saying, like the the numbers made sense for you to get into this business. Right. What goals did you have for? Or did were you did you like see yourself anywhere? Or? Um. Yeah. Honestly, I think that I've accomplished everything that I kind of foresaw myself when I started in the company. Uh, the last decade, I don't think there was nothing bigger than Dell. Uh, we were the ones that started this whole movement. Um, and uh, you know, at the end of the day, I'm very satisfied. I'm happy and content with everything that we established. You know, we've been part of so many different movements. You know, from you know Gerardo being a, uh, one of the pioneers. You know, you got Regulo. There was nobody that used to cater to kids. We got Luis Coronel, and then Ariel came, and then you know, rest in peace. And then you know, we created Los Players del Rancho. That happened. We brought Ulises, and then you got Tercer Elemento, and then now it's La Ona Armado, and so on and so on and so yeah. on, you know. The that story continues. Sure. You got a guy Lenin, you got Los the Limit, you know, there's there's just so much stuff that we've been part of, you know. And yeah. who was the first group that you signed where like it took Del Records to the next level? Um Gerardo. Gerardo. Gerardo was. Yeah. And that was before Ariel? What you had Oh hundred percent, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Ariel? yeah, yeah. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Damn, and that's the question I always wanted to ask, like how how did he discover Ariel? So it's yeah. it's a it's an amazing story and I always get credit credit earned. Right? We were at Gerardo's uh, house and he used to own a studio, right? And uh, one of his brothers, William, and some other guy that used to have a salsa. Uh, they're like, "Hey, have you heard of? Uh, have you seen this guy?" And it was Ariel with the with the video El Toro Encartado, and I'm like, mm-hmm. "I've never, I haven't heard of him." So as soon as he played it, I'm like, "This guy is it." And then he's like, "Well, I know them. I know the guy who's who's uh, uh, mag- managing him in, El- in uh, Mexico." I says, give me in contact with the guy. Call him up. Uh, flew him here in a week. And I think after like two weeks after that, we had already signed him to Dell. Oh, 
Oh shit. Yeah, that was that was huge for us. Huge, you know. I think he what was special about Ariel is he sang with so much passion and let alone the effect that he had on all the musicals that are, oh, yeah, are hitting yeah, right now, yeah, you know. Big impact. I, yeah. You know what? I I've seen even even uh, on you guys' podcast, another podcast, um, where they ask a lot of artists, right? Who inspire yeah. you, Ariel Camacho? Yeah. Who inspire you, Ariel Camacho? So, you know, to me, Ariel Camacho, he's he he, he left a big legacy. You know, he left a, you know he left very young. Um, he's probably one of the probably only artists that I've seen that sings with a lot of. Uh, um, what is the word that I'm looking for? He sings with a lot of like passion. You can feel he, yeah. you know, like you can feel it. He tra- he used to transmit when he used to hear a corrido, dude. That that guy was like he's he's like the guy who you're talking about in the corrido, right? And the valleys, you know, from Temetistas and so many. I mean, it's the guy. The guy's always gonna be a, a legend, you know. He left yeah. a pretty big legacy for yeah. for the genre. Yeah, right? in hindsight, you know, he made so much. But when you first saw that video, um, you probably saw the passion. Anything else that caught your eye? That you said, this is the guy. It was just something different. It's, it's like when I saw Gerardo, you know, you see this little kid uh, recording little videos in his car with the little spiky hair, and he was just different. You know, I'm a big believer that, you know, um, there's a word that I always use. Um, you know, I normally speak more in Spanish, so mm-hmm. oh. you know, I, so I'm trying to I'm trying to live for the word. You know. Oh yeah, well, if you're more comfortable speaking Spanish. No, we can speak both. You sí. know, it, it's just this word that I'm trying to look for. It, it just, poquito. Sí, oh, yeah. no, no, it's just this word. You know. Poquito. Uh, <laughs> Emphasis. <laughs> I, I I remember the word, but he was just different. You know, Ariel was different. When I met the guy, very humble, very hungry. You know, and 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 I knew that he was gonna succeed. You know, since yeah. you got to like spend a lot of time with them, how was he as a person? Was he like? Uh, like, serious the last time i seen him i seen him here right the last time i seen him and it was a sunday right um a lot of people speak about certain individuals oh no he was a nice guy because obviously they passed right i told him in person i don't know if you guys ever seen my instagram but there was i kept the picture on my main pictures where we were like hugging mm-hmm. each other and we were listening to los no Reveles down down here in the in the hall right the most humblest individual that i ever met he lived in this in this facility for six months, so we used to interact every single day, every single day. Very respectful kid, very talented, and the most important to, uh, thing to me he was very humble. I have I, I don't see that no more. You see social media. Uh, I think social media nowadays is about how much money people got, how many sales people uh, are doing their shoes, their houses, their cars. I mean, to me, all that is, is just I don't know. I, I'm not a big fan of it. You know, yeah, I'm old school. You know, people want to respect you deb- debating on how much you could offer them or how uh-huh. much value, which yeah. is like what you said is status. currency or the status itself. You know, 100 percent, 100 percent. And honestly, um, I'm not going to tell you that I'm against it, but I don't support it. You know what I mean? Everybody's doing what, whatever they're doing. And I'm happy for everybody. At the end of the day, uh, I think we're, we're, we're adding to, to the genre to, to make the genre a lot bigger. You know, uh, you know, when I used to go to uh, Premios Juventud, Back in the days with Gerardo, they used to put two girls dancing and fucking two cactus because we were minority. You know, they always have seen this genre as minority, right? Mm-hmm. We're not a region no more. We're global. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, literally, I, I, I feel that we were part of that as well until today. I mean, we have the biggest song in the systems of, of, of um, the platforms, you know? With Ayo de la Sola. So. Just past a billion. A hundred percent. A hundred percent, which is, you know, shout outs to Pedro, Peso. Uh, and everybody behind a project you know I don't I always tell people there's a lot of people in this industry that they want to get the credit for themselves but they don't understand that it takes a great team behind a project mm-hmm. you know it's it's like you guys depend on the guy who set up the cameras and and the guy who edits the videos and it's it's a team behind a project you know yeah, and do you think Ariel Camacho ever got to his prime? Um, I've seen uh, Ariel Camacho one of his last concerts the biggest concerts I've seen um there's 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 a beautiful story, Ariel Camacho in Las Pulgas in Tijuana. Um, by eleven o'clock, they, he had already shut doors. I think the capacity there is like five thousand. Mm-hmm. By ten ten o'clock, there was no more alcohol, right? Oh, like till <laughs> today, he holds a record in in, in TJ, mm-hmm. right? And many other venues, but he I don't think he ever got to see like, like his peak in the career. Mm-hmm. You know, we were just finishing uh, El Karma, yeah. and the Metistas was gonna be the next, the next single. And then 
what happened happened as you guys already know it's very yeah. unfortunate you know yeah he, yeah very talented yeah, very young uh humble full of life i mean the guy was amazing you know i yeah like i said i i have so many amazing memories with the guy yeah. you know? it's crazy how you said too that he lived like literally here yeah he did um, you know like you know we actually like love all this music stuff like we you know we talk about it just for fun right um and the other day we we're at the house and you know we're talking about like ariel and um you know like what made him so special and stuff and i think literally the next day right we went to uh we filmed with regular claro, claro. yeah we got a chance to like talk with him and it's it's, it's crazy like the i don't know like the before and after you know yeah regular recorded uh i think one track with them Regular another amazing artist you know very talented very very talented and and you have signed like multiple artists um what, what is something that you use to i guess distinguish talent you know i think you know, all these artists they want to be signed by Dell Records how do you distinguish like this is my guy or like this is the next biggest group it's I'm gonna tell you a thing you know I, I believe that every every company has its own uh, uh, you know uh, ways of, of uh, recognizing talent to me it's like we have a formula and the formula works you know we've been here 15 16 years you know I have a saying you know it's not about making it it's about maintaining right mm -hmm. so for us I mean, it takes a lot. To me, the most important thing, they have to have charisma. They have to be humble. They, they got to know what they want because a lot of people have talent, but they don't have that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's a lot of arrogant uh, fucking uh, talent out there, you know, and you can't. I don't want to work with them. I mean, have you guys seen that I've signed any, anybody in the past three years? Just recently. I mean, I'll show you text messages from Peso Pluma. My dream is to be with Dow Records. Echame la mano, viejo. Uh, that was 2022 in July. You know, Gavito reached out. Ivan Cornejo reached out. I didn't want to sign nobody. You know, I I was going through a, 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 a health issue, and I didn't want to sign any any artists. You know, till now, I mean, there's I think 2024 is going to be a, a big comeback for 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 Dale. You know? Damn. Big comeback. Yeah. And I noticed you guys are very like selective with the artists. 100. Um, percent You know, compared to like other record labels, um, what would you say are some of like the pros and cons of being very selective? Um, you know, I've seen the other record labels. I don't want to even mention them, but you know, I've seen that there's a little movement, and they want to sign everybody that just fucking like almost plays like him, mm -hmm. you know, and just sign fifty, a hundred artists just to make sure I got about the guy. You know, it's not about that, bro. It's about giving them, you know, making them a priority. You know what I mean? You you see you see their talent and like literally, I, why why should I sign ten artists just to have them all? Well, we sign it to the label. No, like mm -hmm. literally, there's a lot of work we got to do them as an artist us as a label and it's 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 like a marriage you know what i mean yeah. like you guys gotta do your part i gotta do my part and that's how we have been uh, successful and, and established a lot of talent at Dell. you know yeah i think sometimes uh, a lot of the work that the record label does is uh like behind doors or not not very 100 the most public part of the of the job um and i saw in an interview that you said when everything's good um it's the artist when everything's bad is the record label bro, bro i'm i'm always gonna preach about that um there's um <laughs> that's what I'm telling you, you know a lot of artists think that they're big, they're bigger than the label you know I've seen let's just talk about the major 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 labels right mm -hmm. you think Universal's gonna go anywhere you think Sony's gonna go anywhere how many artists have they signed to those labels and they're no longer there or nobody's hearing their music you yeah know? and I think it's safe to say that artists have their moment you know and 100%. I think it's, it's very special that when these artists or uh, there's a cultural movement, but like you said, like the one that stays is a label. A hundred percent. You know, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a very grateful individual that, uh, you know, I have had the opportunity to work with a lot, a lot of uh, uh, talented guys, right? But we're still here, and I don't see them anywhere. I, I don't see those guys anywhere. I mean, you know, let's talk about one in particular, Gerardo. I mean, the guy was a monster. I don't see him anywhere. He's not selling out shows. I mean, God bless him, you know. So that's the way I look at it. Yeah, most definitely not the, the records has like definitely made a insane <laughs> impact and we're, yeah. we're, we're the pioneers you know a lot of people i hear you know a lot of people talk about you know we started this we did that we've been 15 we've been here 15 years if you guys do your homework like literally you know a lot of people got i think we inspire a lot of people you know a lot of independent labels um a lot of uh, uh, uh now new uh, uh artists that have their own particular labels you know yeah. i've seen a lot of that um, but you know what? To me, it's a blessing. You know, the genre grows. Mm -hmm. I, you know, honestly, I give props to everybody because we're all part of a, a big genre right now. Um, but you know, we we all have different uh, formulas and how we do business. You know, they're mm -hmm. successful their way. I'm successful my way. 
and I'm very content, you know. Would yeah. you say that the records paved the way for yes. a lot of these artists, record labels? A lot of artists, a lot of record labels, a lot of managers, a lot of um, a lot of them. You know, I, you know, you gotta give credit credits earned. You know, I mean, if uh, if a lot of people don't see it like that, it doesn't bother me at all. Yeah. You know, I tell people after 15 years, we don't have to prove nothing to nobody. I think we've done it all. You know, there was a there was a big tour that we started. Um, I don't remember the year, but the biggest tours and in, in, in regional music, they were done by Dell. Mm-hmm. Those Mundos Una Historia, where we used to pack arenas, what they're doing now, we did that almost nine years ago. You know what I mean? So to me, it's like, of course we did. Yeah. You know, there's there's a lot to be said behind that, but I'm going to leave it for the book. You know, the book is going to be very interesting. The book is going to come out very soon as well. Yeah, and I, I think it's safe to say that Dell Record has always provided a support system for the artists, you know, 100%. always trying to give them the top, you know, promotion to get to the highest level. 100%. And, and, and honestly, before it was it was more of a challenge. Now it's much easier because of social media, right? Yeah. But there's still, you know, different ways of, of uh, promoting a, a song or an album. You know, nowadays, I mean, a lot of people are doing singles. Nobody really cares about a whole album, you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it just... You know, there's there's changes and you have to go with those waves, you know. How does Dell Records take in those changes when um, obviously social media wasn't a big thing back then compared to now where it's more organic? You know, people are on TikTok stuff is blowing up. What are the major differences that you see in promoting an artist? Okay, check it out. How old are you? I'm 24. Okay, so when I started Dell, everybody was Angel Dell Records, Pepe Dell Records, Joe Dell Records, like everybody and everybody just wanted to be Dell Records. People will fight for a hat like this, a jacket. Like literally, uh, I think even with social media, we were the ones that pretty much created and paved the way as well. Um, obviously, a lot of things have changed, but I don't see too much of a difference to be real honest with you. You know, people are consuming music. It's it, it just the way that people cons- consume the music more than anything, you know? Yeah, most definitely. You guys uh, like t- talk about like paving the way in a lot of different yeah, in a lot aspects. of different ways. I mean, if you guys do your own homework, I mean, uh, it, dude, we we started the whole thing with the Dell models, the merch. We started, yeah. you know, the whole flyers, the whole. They, they, I could create a whole list, mm-hmm. you know. And to me, what I feel a lot of people did, which and, and I'm happy, you know. Yeah. A lot of people just copy and paste. To me, that that's a big satisfaction, you know. Yeah, it's a big satisfaction, you know. I honestly, like I said, we're we're part of a big movement, and I feel that you know Dell was. Uh, part of the 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 movement since yeah. fucking fourteen years ago. Yeah, you know? so, something that um we've talked about um because we've been here a few times uh, for right. meetings and stuff like that um and we talk about like how professional like everything was and and I think that's something that like stood out to us. Uh, Thank you. I feel like you know being in the game fifteen years like help um gives you guys time to like develop so much stuff and and, you know, and saying that like pioneers in a lot of stuff. Yeah. Is there like anything in particular that comes to mind that? If someone had to tell you, like, name name something that you're, like, really proud of that Dell did. Uh, that, uh, honestly, like I said, you know, um, you know, I just feel very proud. And, I look, I, I, I'm the type of individual that I, I give credit to the people that were behind me. You know, like, I got inspired by people, other labels. You know, there's so many other record labels before me. What I did, I kind of saw the way they did business, and I didn't want to do that. I, I did it my way, based on my knowledge. My experience in business, my experience in the streets, so that kind of like literally helped me to 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 create a different business model, you know. And it worked for a lot of us. I mean, I I could get you into details, you know. Nobody, I'm gonna give you an example, right? Back in the days, I mean, I'll name you, you know, a couple of artists that own their masters. Nobody owns their masters. The labels do, yeah. right? Um, that was one of them. When you used to, you know, for entertainment, when you do all these big shows, right? The big promoters back in the days, they're like, well, you know what? I'll buy you the, the talent or, you know what? We're going to do door, but these are the percentages. I pretty much restructure that whole business for the whole genre. You know, I give myself that credit, you know? So there's so many things, you know, we could be here a hundred hours and we won't finish, but I'm saying a lot for the book. Damn. Yeah, it's crazy. So, such an accomplished person, yeah. like business model. and Th- Thank you. Yeah. And, and, we, and, and when you name, you know, like literally you guys been here a couple of times, mm-hmm. you know, we have an amazing team. You know, I've, I tell people, you know, treat people the way you want to be treated. You know, like literally the atmosphere here, it's totally different from going to another record label, you know. And no, no disrespect to anybody, but 
You gotta people people treat people with respect, you know. So. And then dealing with like you know how you had the record label for such a long time. Uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of artists or like promoters like they you know they try to fuck you over. Like how would you deal with that? You know what? Honestly, the angel back in the days, bro, it's a different angel today. I before I was very aggressive, you know, like you know I I grew up differently, you know. Um, nowadays, I don't really care about nobody. I'm in my own zone. I have a lot of peace, you know. I'm. I have nothing to prove, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm yeah. in a different frequency. I tell people. Yeah. yeah. You said uh, back then, you know, you were more aggressive. Uh, now you say you have a lot of peace. You've changed. Um, is it because like you feel like you don't have anything else to prove, or is there like no? A, a you know what? Change? I honestly, you know, you guys are young right now. Once you hit a certain age, I, I believe you mature, and your reaction to certain things, right? They don't af- affect you as much. You know, you have to be strong mentally. You know, like literally, I've, like I says, I've. I'm a, I'm a better version of me today. I don't regret nothing that happened before, but I wish I could have just, fuck, I should have never said that. Mm-hmm. Fuck, I should have never did that, you know? It is what it is. It's part of life, you know? So It's you versus you, you know? Your own competitions uh-huh. yourself. A hundred percent. You know, if I go back and, 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 and talk to that kid, fuck, I'm very proud of that kid. You know, he had a vision, you know? He created an empire, you know? My kids are going to live out, out of that. You know, I want, I want to leave a legacy. To me, it's not how much money I have. It, it's not what I own. Because I'm not gonna take it, but I guarantee you, my kids' kids are gonna benefit from my work. So yeah, generation generation wealth. wealth you know? <laughs> yeah, that must, I feel like that's something that like well, we all aspire to. I know you some, uh, and you did it so young. Yeah, and nobody, you know, I tell people they don't teach you this in school. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's definitely right. I don't want everybody having an empire. A hundred percent. hundred percent. And then um, you say uh, leaving a legacy is very important to you because um, uh, that's like what, what we're gonna take. Um, if you had to describe that legacy, um, well, how would you say? Um, you know what? You know, I I just been an individual that I work out. You know, I I work super hard on my life, and I I was I was always an individual that I never gave a fuck about nothing. You know, I created something so people could enter be entertained. You know, like I always tell the story. You know, what would have happened if Gerardo would have never signed a like, because he was already in the talks with another label, right? What would have happened? What would have happened if this other artist would have never came here, right? So to me, it's just like, life is written, you know? To me, I came here on a mission. Uh, I, I'm very happy where I'm at. I'm happy where I'm going. Uh, I've been a visionary since I was a kid. And you know, the most important thing for me at the end of the day is f- for people to be like, fuck, that guy created that. This person was part of this project. Like, if you really think about it, most of the artists that I named you guys, they all done, a, uh, they play a big impact in the industry right so to me that's pretty much at the end of the day it gives me a lot of peace and satisfaction yeah most definitely i feel like you could like see that piece you know like oh of, yeah you know thinking up something in your head and then you know like through hard work and being a visionary uh you you have all this yeah, yeah. and you know what honestly about. you know one day once you guys read that book and you know when the book comes out you'd be surprised you know i mean you're, you guys are hearing one percent of my life you know that's just, i'm just giving you guys one percent of my life 40 44 years this year um and i i feel very happy with what i've done what i've created i'm not afraid of dying i'm uh, i've done a lot you know i've done a lot i've created a lot and i feel i have a lot of peace because if anything would have happened to me my kids are gonna they're gonna they're gonna enjoy their their father's um uh, hard work you know so all right, guys, we are back from the break, and I wanted to ask because the question got cut off, but right. um, what made you want to, you know, make a book, and when do you plan on releasing it? Um, So I think we all have a story to tell. Mm-hmm. Um, the book, uh, if everything goes as planned, is going to come out uh, 2024 mm-hmm. in July, somewhere. Um, and it's going to be a book, you know, where a lot of people have said, Angel this, Angel that, right? I'm a, I'm a type of individual that I go based on facts. You're never going to see me on social media. I think I've probably done it once and I was a lot younger, right? Uh, if I'm going to say something, I'm going to back it up with evidence, you know? So that's, the book's going to be something like that. So a book is like a way of, um, you know, telling your story, cleaning your name, uh-huh, just uh-huh. everything? You, you know, I don't have to clean anything. I, I just believe that at the end of the day, I don't have to... Um, no tengo que quedar bien con nadie, mm-hmm. you know? No le va a rendir cuentas a ningún ser humano. You know, the things that I believe in, you know? 
one day uh, me vas a rendir cuentas a, a Dios, ¿no? Yeah. So, simplemente es, you know, my kids, you know, that they understand that, you know, their father was not this, it was that. Yeah. That's the most important thing, you know? And why do you think people would like to talk on the internet a lot? Because they need a... a <laughs> <laughs> attention <laughs> I mean think about it I mean for how long have you guys followed me on, on social media long you mean, time how many years damn at least like, yeah well a lot of years give me an idea give me a number give me like five okay in five years have you seen anything out of context angel fucking showing off for this or because of me or that or I own this or I own that or this or that that's not who I am a lot of people do that for attention yo les llamo ricos pobres porque a lo mejor si sí tienen dinero, pero they're empty inside, you know, mm. and uh, I'm fulfilled, you know, so I'm, I'm just a different breed, you know, so. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah, well, to get a little bit back, like, into the music, um, you know, unfortunately, Ariel Camacho passes, uh, you have Los Plebes del Rancho, Ulises Chaides, fast forward a little, um, Tercer Elemento comes out. You're right. And, um, you know, how, how'd you find Tercer Elemento? So, Tercer Elemento was, uh, to today, you know, I believe he's, he's, <laughs> He's a pioneer of, of today's movement, you know? Um, I heard it through Andrew. Andrew showed me the the track, Rafa Caro, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, it's a banger. By that time, Chonchis, or a good friend of mine, had already uh, signed them, and they were working with another label, right? Um, called him up. I says, bro, let's do something with the project. He mm -hmm. says, well, I'm with this label, um, but if you want to do something... Let me talk to them. Talk to them about the project, brought it in. We took that project from zero to a hundred. Um, that was with Rafa Caro. And then um, we did uh, Arolina Carrillo right after it. Yeah. We exploded. Not a hundred percent, 100%, 100%. Chris is a very talented kid. You know, I, you know, he's a very talented kid. I admire that kid. He's been through a lot. You know, the kid's very talented. He's coming out this year again with a badass album, you know? So yeah. wait for it. Yeah, I think we're planning to have him on the on the podcast as well too. Okay. So it's gonna be pretty badass. And um, how would you say Tercer Elemento paved the way for like the movement of today? A hundred percent confirmed. You know, I'll check that. You know, I'll check that little square. You know, he did. Think yeah. about it. Just do the calculations. You know, um, they're they're. <laughs> I think 2019. That's when they came out with Rafa Car, if I'm not mistaken. Then right after that. 2018-2019, you know, I want to, I don't want to miss the years, but I mean, it's what, 20, 24 almost, so, yeah. you know. Yeah, the Rafa Caro. I think it was a little bit earlier, no, we were still in high school. No, it was, it was 2018-2019. Yeah, damn, that's crazy. And I think one of the first things that I noticed about Chris's voice is that it's so, so different. 100%. And I think um a lot of people, they didn't like it. I think it, it, it was either a voice if. You either really liked it or you didn't like it. But right. what I noticed from, you know, him starting that that movement is I think it gave other people a chance. A hundred percent. Because you didn't 100%. have to be like you didn't have to have the greatest voice. You just had to have like like be unique. Like yeah, like be unique, like super different, unique voice. And I, I think I, I, I always tell him, I don't know if you guys ever met him. That kid's one on one. The way he thinks and everything, he's very talented. I'm a, I was a big fan. I'm still a big fan of his music, right? It's just, you know, when the whole group sat, separated, you know, the there was a lot of changes. But like I said, you know, he's going he's gonna to drop a pretty big album. Just wait for it. You know, I'm very happy I heard the album. I'm fucking, like, super excited. Yeah, Jeez. and I think when he did that song with with Burner. Oh, like, yeah, El Chivo. Yeah, yeah, that song was crazy. I think yeah. that's where everything changed. Yeah. So like I think um the regional Mexican music was getting into other genres. Hundred yeah, percent. And then I feel like it started to like. I think that, that song up. is one of the songs you know that pretty much started uh, the movement of today. Of today. And um, shout out to Burner too. So you know. Yeah. Abraham I, Abraham Bosch, he wrote that song too, and uh, it was a lot of magic that day in the studio. I remember I was there through the whole process. Definitely. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then you said uh, you, you were there in the in the studio that day. Do you think um, it was going to make, like, that impact that it did when you heard it? Oh, f for sure, 100%. 100%, like like I said, you know, you can just feel it. I'm a, I'm a type of individual. I'm, I'm about energy, bro. I know you're nervous as fuck. I can just feel your energy. <laughs> um, I have 
you know, felt everybody's energy here in the room. And since I was a kid, you know, I have that gift, you know, and that's why I stay away from a lot of people. You guys never see me in fucking uh, award shows or all that. That drains my energy, you know, so I, I knew it was going to be a hit when I was there, you know. Felt yeah. good. I was going to ask about that like that. I don't really see you like at award shows or like, you know, out much. Is it because is it of that what you, what you said? Like, um, yeah, that's, that's the main reason, you know, if, if you guys go back, like I says. In the past 16 years that I've been in business, I've probably been to maybe four or five <laughs> max in all these years. You know, I'm I'm just, I think I think different, I act different, I see life in a different perspective and no disrespect to nobody, but that's just who, that's me, you know? And that makes, that fulfills me, you know? I yeah. like to conserve my, my energy and utilize it for things that fulfill me or my kids or my family, you know, so. Mm-hmm. What do you think about Musica Mexicana? being like mainstream in a sense it's very Bro, crazy feel, being I, mainstream I feel, I feel fucking proud of everybody that's part of it you know but we are a big part of the beginning of that yeah we, we paved the way you know and you guys um uh sign is la one armado which you know pedro was the one that composed the the number one song that hit a billion which is the first music uh, regional Mexican music to do that, which a is insane. Streams, a billion streams. Bro. streams. You know what? Honestly, um, been working with him four years now. Four years. Um, one thing I, I admire about Pedro, he's very he's one on one as well. The way he writes, a very humble kid, talented. Um, when I asked him, you know, how you came up with that song, he says, you know what? I think God wrote it. You know, boom, boom, boom. Fifteen minutes, I wrote that song. Look what it did. So it's like you got to be connected with yourself and I'm a big believer of the universe you know so I, I, I think that that song was meant to be it was part of the journey it was already written before it was out so I feel very proud to be part of it you know yeah I think for that us as a label that's huge bro no for and me. that's for a lot of people you know I you know I bring I hear comments and oh that was done you know fucking bro there it is you know a little slap in the face you know <laughs> no, no, definitely. Well, that's another first. Uh, yeah. No matter what happens after, we were the first. We were the first ones to reach a, a ten million on YouTube. Yeah. This this year, there's a lot of things that happened in uh, in this year. I, I believe in numerology. It was a seven, and everything that I knew was gonna happen to happen. Next year is an eight, and I know exactly what's gonna happen. And I feel uh, I'm at peace. You know. Yeah, most we're gonna we're gonna do a lot of big things next year. Yeah. You, you guys will see. Yeah. yeah. And going back to uh, Slavon a little bit, like right. how has it been? You said you've been working with them four years. It's how has it been? How do you describe those four years? Uh, you know what? Honestly, if I would tell you, you know, it's been a, it's been an amazing journey. You know, teaching them the business, they don't understand the business, um, uh, guiding them, uh, supporting them. Uh, I feel that, you know, sometimes I feel like we're at a at a stage where you know a lot of artists. I think a lot of artists dream to be independent uh, at, at some point, right? And I feel like I, I we played a big role in, in their success. And if tomorrow that's where they want to go, I'm going to feel super happy and honored that I was part of the project since, you know, this is a crazy story. And I was telling the story, I didn't look for them. They looked for me. You know, I didn't look for Gerardo. Gerardo pretty much looked for me. I didn't look, you know, for a lot of artists. So it just, it's part of the journey, man. You know? Yeah. I think I when people like see that you provide so much value, like, 100%. Okay, that's the person that's going to be able to help me or yeah it's like i was telling you because you asked me you know I, I said this in the past um when everything's good and then fucking everything's amazing it's because of the artist right they feel like the the company doesn't do nothing for them right and when everything's bad it's because of the company you know if a lot of artists will take in consideration you know like literally here we got 30 people behind your project you know i mean you think uh, uh, uh fucking your project just went viral just because of you there's a team behind it you know, there's there's a team behind every successful story. You know yeah. what I mean? You got to credit credit earned. Simple as that. And yeah. you mentioned that a lot of artists, um, you know, they came to you, like to work with you. Right. Has there ever been an artist that came to you, and like in a way you told them no, and you kind of regretted it? Um. Yeah. And I'll tell you a story, bro. He's gonna remember this one. When uh, when the whole week fucking like took off. Mm-hmm. Me and Ramoncito, I know Ramoncito for so many years. You know. Uh, from Legado Siete, and he brought me this little album, right? Uh, what was the name on? What was the name? El Afro, El Afro. Oh, like yeah. all those hits mm-hmm. were in yeah, that album, right? Verdes, and I was like, bro, I don't think this is gonna hit. It was a slap in the face for me, honestly. 
mm-hmm. you know what I mean you gotta fucking give it to them you know um, I think that was probably it I mean I told you you know I mean you could ask him Ivan Cornejo reached out Gavito reached out Peso Pluma himself reached out to me uh-huh. um, and literally you know I was I was just in a different uh, um, uh, stage of my life you know I was dealing with some health issues mm-hmm. so I, I wanted to put all my time and energy on, on my health you know so but I'm glad what they've done you know I'm glad what yeah. Legado did you know after um uh, Tercer Elemento, I mean, they're they're a big factor in the whole uh, wheat movement, you know? You got to give it to them. You have to give it to them, you know? Yeah, yeah. Credit, credit's due where it's due, you know? 100%, 100%, you know? I mean, think about it. Ramon was the one that discovered fucking Fuerza Regida, bro. Oh, yeah. It's Him, crazy. himself. They haven't given that credit, you know what I mean? Other people get that credit. That's, that's crazy, bro, but I believe in good karma and I believe in bad karma, you know? Yeah. You said that you're a numbers person. What does the number 27 mean? Because so, you brand uh, it. I'll, I'll tell you super fast, you know, like literally, you know, um, a billion people have asked me, but it has to do with my birthday. Oh. My birthday, 7, 20, 1980. Add them together. 7, the 2, the 1, the 9, and the 8. Add them, Jason. 27. <laughs> 27. Get some water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you add the 2 and the 7 is 9. 9 is the biggest number in numerology. You know, so like I said, we all had a we all had a purpose and a mission before we were born. You know, so that's my understanding of life. Yeah, that's good. Even like the last name. Too. Oh, he was saying like, damn, that's a badass last name. Like Del Villar, and how you no. put like Del Records. Yeah. So now you can put Del like Del Entertainment. You know, one hundred percent. Everything has to do with my last name and my father. Rest in peace. Was very. Uh, uh, I named everything after him mm-hmm. because he was very proud of his name, which I am as well. And I named everything after my last name. You know, so. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, well, you say, like, the 27, like, the whole brand, I think it's it's around you, you know, and, and the label. Yeah, you know? and I promote it a lot, bro. Like, literally, bro, I, I kid you not. I feel like no, you're really no, no, no disrespect to all these little kids, bro, but I, I see all these fucking guys just fucking, you know, promoting, you know, fucking, they they put all these videos that they're at this, buying this brand, bro. You, you're making them, bro, I, I don't worry none of that shit. Mm-hmm. I'm going to promote my shit. I'm going to promote my brand, you know, today, tomorrow, and forever, bro. Yeah, you know, that's, that's just me, you know. I feel like that takes a level of uh, like maturity, right? To 100%. Because I think well, you saw me, I'm, I'm wearing sweats, I'm wearing sandals. You guys didn't see me with no brand stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I don't need it, you know. You know, I don't, bro. People think that because you're wearing brand, you know, you, you're gonna look successful. I know a lot of people that wear a lot of stuff that you know, with all these big brands, and they got they got no money, bro. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I believe you got to be yourself, you know. Yeah, most yeah. definitely. Yeah, and so so you embody the brand, um, you know, like it's your it's your lifestyle. Um, how do you describe your um, I feel like your involvement with Dell Records, like on a day to day basis? Like not, given, like not as much anymore, but I'm I, I take the major decisions on the company. Uh, I mean, you guys met Andrew. Mm-hmm. Andrew plays a big role in the company, uh, but till till today, I'm the one that brings in the talent. You know, I think it's fucking. Since they want ninety five percent of all the talent, I was the one that brought them to the company. You brought them, yeah. Um, and how is that like? How's that process? Do most most of them come to you? Like, have you reached out to anybody? Um, both. Right now, recently, you know, I have reached out to a couple of them. You know, Tony from uh, uh, Sucesión. Sucesión. That kid, bro, just be on the lookout, bro. That kid's gonna blow up. You know, I I saw him, and and I'm a big fan of a song that kind of I identify myself with that song and when I found that he wrote it mm-hmm. I reached I reached out to him on Instagram and I told him my respects I never told him hey you want to sign with the company none of that right and the next day I found out he was signed with a with, with a label in Mexico Don Julio which is you know he's he's a my business partner in the project I reached out and now you know he's he's part of the company already and and you're gonna see exactly what we're gonna do with that project is, is a song about you that song mm-hmm. is gonna fucking blow up, bro. With him, you know. But he has a lot of other songs, you know, a lot of other songs. And then, you know, we signed. I think we signed about three, four kids in the past two weeks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. say that like devolution, but then also the I, I saw that you said like you need to be part of that evolution of, of the of the game. Um, like who who have you have you signed? Can you tell us about who you signed or? Um, there's another kid, Emmanuel from Seattle. I think that kid's gonna fucking kill it. Um, that kid is very talented, bro. I'm pretty sure you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, who else did we sign? 
you know, there's about two, three surprises that are coming that you guys will definitely get to see. But I think we're, it's time for Adele to break the next big artist, you know? I think in the past four years, it was Eslabon, and we mainly focus on Eslabon. You know, now it's, we got to break another one, two, three artists, you know? That's, that's, that's the goal for, for, yeah. for the brand. You said uh, it's uh, that you wanted, like, a global artist. We wanted a global artist. I've been, dude, I'm part of so many stuff. It's just, you know, 2019, I had already quit from this whole uh, mm -hmm. uh, movement. You know, I went to Miami, and I was, um, I met a lot of people in the in the whole reggaeton, right? One of them is a good friend of mine, Rafi Pina, which, you know, um, send him a shout out. But I was able to kind of see and understand their business, right? They're more of a global uh, 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 movement, you know, at that time. And uh, long story short, bro, you know, I was part of his whole company. That's all I could tell you. The whole company, you know, within three months. Yeah. And then now that you mentioned uh, reggaeton, uh, back then we would talk about how yeah. <clears throat> back then like reggaetoneros like Osuna yeah, like they would all get together whether it was like one song for reggaetoneros yeah. like yeah. With, without a problem and then right. a problem that we saw in the Musica Mexicana is that it was so hard well we wouldn't really see an artist from this label collab with an artist from this label like why do you think it was hard for you know labels to get together and to Jealousy agree? fucking um, I think the one that kind of broke that barrier was Grupo Firme. You mm -hmm. gotta give it to them, you know? They were like, I don't care if your job blow, if you're signed to this little record label, if you, if you have so many streams, or you know what, I'm, I wanna work with everybody. So mm -hmm. I think that's a big key of their success. But, you know, getting to the labels, I, I just feel like it was, you know what, I don't like that label, they don't like me, and I'm not gonna do business with you, or a lot of that crap, you know? Yeah, yeah most definitely. Or oh, we're bigger than you, and you know, my numbers are bigger, bro. Yeah. Yeah, because we would always uh, talk. I think uh, one one big moment was when uh, we would say, like, oh, uh, uh, what was it? Um, it's Lavon and Junior H making a song. That, that was, like, a whole topic for us. We're, yeah, I remember. You know, at first, yes, no, yes. Uh, the kids agreed to do it. Then the label said no. And then I said yes. And, you know, the whole thing, you know, it just got to the point that we, we did the song, you know. And it was, I think, honestly, um, they, they, they should be more of that, you know? Like, if we unite more, I believe that we would have had a... We could still... I mean, there's a lot of room to, to, to grow in the business still, you know? So, yeah, most most definitely. I think uh, yeah. part of the like the success, well, in, in my opinion, part of like, the success was uh, being able to do uh, like those collaborations. Yeah, that 100%. Because really, I feel like it wasn't that big back then, right? Like, mm -hmm. It mostly was just like, mm -hmm. oh, like what song is he doing? And just expecting, you know, these two record labels. Like, they I mean, think about it. Together. If I go back, big, big songs with collabs, it was among the same company, you know? You got uh, Fantasma doing Los con los Cuates, Cabrón y Vago, you know? That's a, that was a big, that was a big hit. You got Recordando Manuel, you know? Lenin and Gerardo, Arolina Carrillo, and so on and so on. But it was never this company with that company. You know? It was just among the company. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what pushed you guys to... To like, I think the fans did. I think it happened very organically. You know, the fan wanted to see this artist with this artist. You know, so you gotta give people what they want. They're consuming. They're paying. Yeah, you know what I mean. So consumers. 100%. It's like two worlds colliding. You know, th yeah. this style and this style. Let's I can mezclarlo. So back in the days, I started a, a tour called like I mentioned, Dos Mundos Una Historia. When I brought in Gerardo and Recode, it was two different audience, mm -hmm. right? It was a very successful tour. I brought them the, the the older generation, the new generation all together. And we did a lot of arenas, a lot of fucking arenas, you know. And like I said, you know, I, I think we got to give people what they want. Yeah, most definitely. 100%. 100%. Uh, that's an aspect that changed, like, for the, for the better. Yeah. Um, you say there's still a lot more to go. Uh, what would you like to change in, like, in this space? I wouldn't change anything. I'm just back, you know. I'm back. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start signing artists. I'm going to, you know... I, we have a formula and obviously it has worked in 15 years we just we're back and we're gonna go develop the next couple of artists you know yeah how, how do you feel being back from uh you said you took this break how, how do you feel um you know what I, I feel good you know it just my whole situation has to do with you know temperature and and so on and so on but i fucking feel brand new you know i feel super super brand new you know so yeah 
How, how do watch you, out, watch out, man. I'm just, believe yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. How, how do you stay like, like with that drive after so many years and I'm so many accomplishments? Hungry, man. I, you know, people that really know me, which I'm not trying to impress nobody. I haven't changed. I'm the same person, bro. I don't, bro. I don't care about a lot of stuff. You know, I'm. I know what I want. I know what I need, and I know what fulfills me, and I know what makes me happy. You know, and I know what I need to do to provide for my kids. Uh, what, what's your next goal? Um, probably my next goal right now, and uh, personally or business wise, both of we can. Both, yeah. Oh man, I just want to keep growing in the spiritual. Uh, dimension that I'm in, you know, um, on a business aspect, just like I said, I don't have to prove nothing to anybody, you know, I just keep proving it to me, to my team, and we just want to develop uh, another big global artist, you know, that's that's, that's artist. a big goal for us next year. That was the I think. Yeah. We just already had a, a global song. A hundred percent, we had a global song, now let's get the, the global artists, you know, I mean, you got to give it to the guys who <laughs> paved the way there as well, that's who did an amazing job, you got to give it to the guy, and you know, there's the doors got they're open already. You know, who's next? I always tell people who's next. And uh, out of all these years that you've been running your label, what are some big challenges that you faced and that have molded you to you know just keep going to the next level? Um, you know what? In this in this industry, it's pretty pretty tough to trust people. You know, I believe that I still I'm still a type of individual that you know if we agree on something and I give it to Lenny. You know, Lenny's a perfect example. Me and Lenny were with. I believe three years without a contract. But, you know, fuck it, you know, let me show you, you show me, and then after that, if you're happy, I'm happy, we'll, we'll sign the contract. A couple of days ago, he just resigned again another three years, you know, so, you know, that's one thing, you can't really trust people nowadays, you know? I mean, you know, some artists are like fucking, uh, uh, I, I call them like prostitutes, or like fucking hoes, you know, they'll come and tell them, hey, how much is he charging you? I'll charge you a little less, just come with me. And then by saving the five percent, ten percent, they fuck up the whole infrastructure and everything that certainly. And I'm talking about in general, you know what I mean? Yeah. They'll go with the next label just because somebody out from five percent or ten percent cheaper, you know. So yeah. is that is that pretty common that like they'll in, be like telling in, in our in our industry? Yeah, mm. sadly, you know. But it is what it is. That's why you know I tell my I tell my my team that my vision is like. I don't want to sign artists on a longevity, mm -hmm. you know, short term longevity. If you know they break in first two years, we got two more years to kind of recoup our investment. People think mm -hmm. that, you know, us as labels, we just sit down and, and and the song goes viral. No, there's a lot of money, there's a lot of investment, there's a lot of time uh, 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 behind a project, you know. So it yeah. happens. It's very common, you know. So yeah. most definitely. So let's say you get a, a song um, on the label end. Um, what do you guys do for it to set up for success? There's a formula, like I told you. You know, there's a formula. It's like going to Coca Cola. Can you tell me how do you make this? I get you. Yeah. How many fucking uh, spoons of sugar? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, there's there's obviously a, a a a marketing team, a strategy behind it, and um, you know, it's sometimes we get with the artist and we come up with a plan. And not every song has been successful. Let's be quite honest. You know, but at the end of the day. I'm a big believer that we're all here because of the fans. I mean, yeah. you they're honestly the ones who are consuming the music. They're going to the concerts. They're doing now the downloads. They're buying the shirt, the hat. So, I mean, we wouldn't be here without the fans and God, you know, at the end of the day, you know, that's, to me, that's the most most important thing. Yeah. But like, I think it goes back to saying what you said, like being humble and... Uh, you have to be humble, like, bro. And accept, accepting all the, well, like some of the failures as well, huh? 100%. You know, I mean, you guys met Andrew. I mean... Yeah. Give me, give, give me a, 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 for example, like I tell people, if you guys look at Andrew, me as a father, I'm very, uh, I'm very, uh, um, um, fuck, so many words, you know, I'm, I'm impressed, I'm happy, I'm satisfied that he's a very intelligent, humble kid. Another kid, in, uh, you know, with his uh, availability or his position, he could be fucking like, Go crazy. hijo de papi and fucking, you know, money and fucking you know exotic cars and no the kid's very humble bro you know he yeah. comes from a humble beginnings and and i have encouraged him to to be humble you know he will, he will come in the room and he'll fucking shake everybody's hand and i always tell him look at him in the eyes and mm -hmm. give people yeah. the respect you know that you want to get as an individual you know yeah andrew's a super cool friend of ours too yeah i know got his yeah. drunk once 
<laughs> yeah, I fucking love to have fun. Like, yeah, have a definitely. cup, shot. Oh, man. take a little break. Very humble kid. Very humble kid. Yeah, very, very humble kid. Yeah. And I, and I wanted to ask: Has anyone offered you like a lot of money to sell Dell Records? Hundred percent. And have you thought about it? Uh, like, yes, and, yes and no. Yes, because at some point I says, "Fuck, you know what? I'll never finish that money." <laughs> and then I says, "If I sell it, um." kind of retired mm-hmm. and as like one brought me back I always I always tell the story mm-hmm. because I wasn't motivated anymore right mm-hmm. something always brings me back mm-hmm. to to this right and I feel that we haven't done what we need to do as a company we need a global artist I think once I do that and I accomplish that probably you know I, I will consider it damn damn I will consider it you know because at the end of the day you know, it's not how much money you make, it's how much money you keep. How much your piece is worth. You know what I mean? I don't want to be one day fucking found behind my desk and you die You die out of a heart attack because it accumulates. There's a lot of stress behind mm-hmm. running a label, dealing with artists, and it's just tough. People think it's easy. It's not easy. And do you think an artist... Well, I mean, there's a lot of artists who are, like, anti-label. You know, they don't want to sign. They want to stay independent. Do you think it's possible for an artist, in, for an artist to stay independent and, like, go global? Well, like in our space I haven't seen one on. yet in 16 years. There's a lot of artists that think that they could do it on their own. It's not easy, and mm-hmm. it doesn't take money. I guarantee you. But, you know, there's a big surprise. We started, um, we are part of it. Um, Andrew started a company. It's called Distro 7. So now we, we're going to have the option. You as an artist, you're going to have an option either to sign with the label or get a distro deal. Yeah. You know, because a lot of artists, and I've encouraged a lot of artists, I've, bro, one of your masters. Yeah. You know what I mean? One of your masters. Um, but there's a lot of changes. There's a lot of changes next year. And, and I believe, you know, that's going to change a lot of people's perspective. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And whose idea was it to uh, we'll start that distro? Because I think it's pretty interesting because, like, My? you guys are a label and you guys distribute your own music through you guys' own company. 100%. You know, uh, 2019, we were we cut a deal directly with Google. Mm-hmm. You know, we uh, manage our own uh, uh, assets on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to be directly with the rest of the DSPs, you know, Apple, Spotify, you know. So out of something bad, something good came, Yeah. you know. When I was, you know, fucking at home, you know, dealing with my health, that came up. Sat down with the board, given the idea, we ran with it. As of today, you know, we, we, we own a, dis- a, a, a distribution. The first big catalog, and you have to search it, that we have on that distro, is uh, Tamarino Records. All the stuff yeah. from uh, Karim Leon. So it's, it's it's a privilege that we started with that major catalog. You know, yeah, after a big start, a hundred percent. 100%. So to us, it's a big satisfaction, and then more to come. Yeah. All right, well, it's. I think it's been a, an honor to sit here with you, have the time. Uh, you could tell we're a little nervous, but because I think it shows like how um, like special this, this time for us has been. Um, and is there anything else that you want to say to everybody watching? Uh, um, you know, the only thing that I've encouraged people, I mean, you guys, I don't know if you guys see it or not, every Monday I, say, I sit here and, and I try to send a positive uh, message to a lot of people and a lot of people hit me up you know what that message kind of uh it made my day or it kind of inspired me i you know i i've seen that i inspired a lot of kids a lot of youth a lot of older people a lot of women a lot of men so to me just follow your dreams you know follow your heart you know i'm a big believer that you know if i'm in a room you know how what it, you know however people make me feel like i, I follow that your gut feeling you know you got to follow your gut feeling you know and you know tomorrow's not promised you know live today today is Today's the day, you know. Yesterday is the past. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow is the future. Just nothing's promised for tomorrow, you know. And what could uh, people expect from Dell Records next year? Uh, I think a, a big comeback. A big comeback. Big comeback. You know, we we didn't sign anybody in three years, um, and I feel like we're ready. Yeah, we're ready right. to come back. Super yeah. ready to come back. Yeah. Well, I can just say, you know, thank you for your time. For well, letting us interview you because you know there's, there's not much. You, you know what? Honestly, I've um. When Andrew told me, I says, let me think about it, and he'll tell you. And then I says, fuck it, let's do it, why not? And then, you know, today I'm fucking sick, and I'm here, you know? So, uh, thank you guys for the invitation. Thank you guys for coming here. 
this is you guys' house. I think I appreciate you know, you. I, appreciate I've told you guys many times, and you know, a big shout out to all your fans. Subscribe on the YouTube channel. Yeah, and shout out to Andrew too. Guys. You know, yeah, shout yeah, out yeah, Andrew. You know, he he's he's the man. You know, I'm that kid's. He's done a phenomenal job. You know, running mm -hmm. the business. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Yeah, so many accomplishments. Uh, you know. We would have needed a few days to talk about like absolutely everything. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But believe, believe me, trust me. You know, there's. Yeah. But the book is coming out. The yeah, book is coming, coming out. out to set the record straight. Yeah, yeah. The book who. is coming out. I think we all have a story to tell. Mm -hmm. You know, my story. Uh, the purpose was to, like I says, you know, I'm, I was born in Mexico. You know, I came here as an immigrant. Mm -hmm. If I did it, anybody could do it. You know, yeah, it just, you different. have to believe. You have to believe in yourself. I'm 43 years old. I'm still hungry. Uh, you know, I'm still. Still want to succeed. I still want to develop more talent, and why not? You know, it's part of my journey. You know, yeah, I mean, we gotta keep going. I think it's an, you're an inspiration to a, a lot of us. And thank you. You know, I don't wouldn't expect. You know, and I think for like us here too, no, like everything you, you've you. accomplished and like the hunger that you keep. You know, being uh, so accomplished. Yeah, no, no, yeah. thank you. You know, I've the, even when I started my podcast, you know, I was like, you know what? There's nobody doing podcasts. You know, if you guys think about it and search it, I was probably the first. One of the first ones that started a podcast. Oh, it's so important, you know, yeah, yeah. to to sit down and to for people to to know the person behind because a lot of people think, oh, well, angels, this person or that person. Yeah. Like literally, you gotta. I'm about energy, you know. Like yeah. I don't fake it. You know? And what could we expect from your podcast next year? Um, you know, I'm gonna come back with the podcast. Uh, it's gonna be me and a and a and a good friend, and uh, I'm excited. I'm fucking excited for that podcast. They're gonna, you know, my whole thing now is, is just, I'm gonna talk about reality, the truth, mm -hmm. you know? I'm, I'm open, you know, I'm gonna be open, you know, to questions that people wanna know about Angel, the label, this mm -hmm. or that, or, you know? I think it's very important to interact with mm -hmm. the fans. It's not, it's not about what he said, and not what I'm telling you. There's a big difference, you know? Yeah. You know, so to me, it's like, get to know me, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, if a lot of people says, you know what, Angel's this and this and that, you know what? I'm not. I'm not that person. Just get to know me, and then once you get to know me, then, you know, whatever your your decision, uh, you know, you make, uh, I'm okay with it too. Yeah. You know. So, sure. so wait for that podcast. It's gonna be interesting. I'm gonna definitely invite you guys. Like we're gonna be on the other side of. Uh, oh, uh, oh, oh, you know? some shit to say. Oh yeah, 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 for oh, sure. Gosh, He's like, oh, do we? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you guys done a, an amazing job. I'm very uh, um, um, fucking. Uh, I'm very blessed to know to see how much you guys grown as well. Thank you know, you keep thanks. it up, keep up the good work. I mean, uh, you guys cater a lot to the youth, to me as well. I haven't seen all the podcasts, <laughs> but the ones that I've seen, I'm like, man, you, you guys are fucking amazing. Thank you, know? you thank appreciate you. it. Keep, keep it up, yeah, and, and I hope your YouTube channel has too. Ten million as well, no fucking time, you know, to yeah. get to get satisfaction. So it's we a great throw a party and invite you guys. Fucking let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. I'm <laughs> there. I'm there with the fucking. Uh, throw it I'm, here. I'm there. I'm there with yeah. the champagne. You know. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, yeah. When we saw like the the, the whole ten million thing, like I, that's an inspiration. Like, Thank you. You know, yeah. once again, we were the first ones. To me, that was a big accomplishment. A big accomplishment. You know, big accomplishment. Yeah. You know, and you know, I always say this. You know, Tamarindo, he was, you know, he he uploaded the first video on that channel, so mm -hmm. I give it to him as well. Wow, crazy. Yeah. Damn. Well, thank you guys for watching to the end. Wait on the book. Wait on what the records got coming next year. And New artist. A new artist, of course. A lot of new artists. A lot of new artists. A lot of new talent. A lot of surprises. And, you know, just... You better watch out. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Honestly, people ask me, who's your competition? You're looking at my own competition. I don't compete with nobody. I'm in my own lane, and I'm happy where I'm at. You know? It's crazy, guys. All right. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And peace out. Peace, peace out, guys. Thanks for watching.